unless you're a cowboy fan. Or a hater, as Skip would say. Yeah. It is time to skip the DF. Time for Undisputed. Time to run it back with Mac and Dak. Whoopee! Here we go, go! If possible, I feel even worse today than I felt Sunday night. At least then I had a metallic silver lining. At least Mike McCartney was finally gone. Sorry, Cowboy Nation. It's April Fools in January when we've been made to look like fools for going on 30 Januaries. Look, we were down 57 to nothing late in the first half and 48 to 16 early in the fourth quarter at home where we'd won 16 straight against the youngest team in the NFL, the first seven seed to ever beat a two seed. And Jerry Jones just sent this message to his country club of the locker room. It's okay. We'll try it again next year. Maybe we'll get lucky. I remind you that effectively, we, as in Dallas Cowboys, lost four of our last five games because Detroit beat us at home until that ref handed that one right back to the Cowboys. Yet, in a statement last night, Jerry Jones actually said this. He said, I believe this team is very close and capable of achieving our ultimate goals. And the best step forward for us will be with Mike McCarthy as our head coach. There is great benefit to continuing the team's progress under Mike's leadership as our head coach. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at that statement. You know what? <sighs> Enough of me for the moment. I've got to get the perspective of a man who actually played for the Dallas Cowboys, a man who knows Jerry very well, and I know him maybe all too well. I'm talking about the former number 19. I'm talking about Keyshawn Johnson. Mr. Johnson, what is your reaction to all of the above, please? I'm fine with it. Hmm. I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I, I understand you are looking for instant success. The microwave society that we live in, you oh, it's, have zero How about patience. 28 years of impatience, Not, right? It, okay. Well, look, in, in that 28 years you mentioned, Skip, you would have gone another six, seven, eight, nine, ten years if you make a coaching change and it does not go the way you want it. So you love the misery. Because you don't know how hard it is to win 36 games in three years. Clearly you don't. Well, I do. Cle right. cle clearly you do not because here you are, as I told you, Richard and Michael, all of a sudden you want them gone. He's got to go. They should have fired him on the tournament. All that. No. Take a step back. You process the situation. Then you make a decision, an intelligent decision, on what makes the best, the most, and the best for your team, what makes the most sense? Mm. What's the best thing for the team? Mm. That's what you have to do. And Jerry Jones, Steven, and, and the, the, the brass the front office sat back. They watched the film. They looked at the tape. They met. They communicated. And they said, this is the best for our team moving forward. Mm. Obviously, there needs to be cleanup in certain situations. Penalties clearly need to be cleaned up. They led okay. the NFL in penalties. That's why you need to clean that yeah. up. Yeah. Clock management needs to be cleaned up. Late game, uh, late game situation, both on defense and offense, need to be cleaned up. All of that is fixable. Okay, now the question is, where does Dan Quinn sit in all this equation of a new head coach? I mean, of a, 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 a possibility of him becoming a new head coach. Does Jerry Jones say, I'm not going to start, because if you start a new defensive coordinator, you're going to have some bumps and bruises along the way. Check San Francisco 49ers, D'Amico Ryans, part of the staff, seamless transition for Robert Sala. But the moment that they went outside the building to Steve Wilk, they had to bring him from upstairs to downstairs to get things turned around. So there was some bumps along the way. If Dan Quinn all of a sudden takes one of these jobs that's available to him, now maybe you bring somebody in from the outside because I don't know who would, who, I don't know the staff off the top of my head that would take over immediately. And maybe assume, Al Harris would be. Uh, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe Al Harris. I, I'm assuming, I don't know, but let's assume it's Al Harris. Maybe the road is bumpy a little bit early on, but maybe it's not because he hadn't been a defensive coordinator in the past. 
we assume that that may be the case. But if they bring somebody from the outside in, because I'm sure Dan Quinn would love for Al Harris to go with him to whether it's Seattle or Washington or wherever he's interviewing to be his defensive coordinator, okay, which is a which is not a lateral move, but a move that moves him up and gives him an opportunity, even if Dan Quinn is calling the defense. So you say, oh my God, that was Jerry wasn't thinking he was he wants us to stay the same. Keyshawn, you want us to be the same so you can poke fun at us? No, it's that, just that the, is true. It's the right move. Mm-hmm. How about this though, Skip? Because you don't think you you don't think, in my opinion, when it comes to these sort of things, because your emotion are so driven to the Dallas Cowboys. What if Bill Belichick did not want the job? Simply I, just didn't I, I didn't really want Bill Belichick. Fine. I but think the rest of on but the rest of Cowboy Nation were looking at Bill Belichick. Okay? Then you say you want Harbaugh. Harbaugh this, Harbaugh that, Harbaugh this. I told you yesterday, the day before. What makes you think that Jim Harbaugh is any better than Mike McCarthy at the head coaching position? Don't get caught up in a national championship in college football. Don't get caught up with what he did 10 years ago for the San Francisco 49ers. For three straight years. That's fine. Three Mike McCarthy NFC is giving you 36 yeah. games in the winning column in three years. He also won a Super Bowl, even though it was quite some time ago. 14 he, years ago. He understands how to win, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Jim Harbaugh did not. And what if Jim Harbaugh comes to Dallas? And it's not what you think. So guess what you're going to say? Oh, Jim why do we do this? Why do we do that? What do we do this for? I just don't understand the way y'all think sometimes. So you're saying that Mike McCarthy is a better football coach than Jim Harbaugh? No, what I am saying is Mike McCarthy and Jim Harbaugh are so close. Is there really a difference maker? Yes. How? Difference. How could it be? It's called dynamic leadership. It's called Jimmy Johnson Memorial Dynamic Leadership. Jimmy Johnson, that we don't Jimmy have. Johnson is a different coach than Harbaugh. Yeah. Different personality, different is style. It? Okay, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson at halftime the other day on Fox gave the greatest halftime yes. speech I think Absolutely. I've ever seen. And, and unfortunately, won, he was doing it on TV and, and not won, in the locker room. You won two Super Bowls because of that. Yep. That ain't Jim Harbaugh. That ain't the same I don't guy. know about Jim. That ain't I, the same. I think you what know, you need, guy. what you need, has nothing to do with Jim Harbaugh. Mike McCarthy somehow, for me, can clean up the clock management and kind of show me. All I needed to do is clam the clipboard down once and curse out someone who does something wrong. Then I might feel like, okay, well, he's demanding because you bring up a great point. He's not a demand, kind of like just a a coach that knows what to do and he's kind of just there. He's, he's not a, just he's not, there. He's not a a forceful guy, but there's no a lot of different speaking. But there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Remember Tony Dungy I played for, and I was leaving Parcells dog cursing me every other day. And then when I got to Dungy and I did something wrong, and Tony said, "Hey, Tony can go, and we'll figure it out, and it'll be okay." And I'm like, "Okay," but because it's different. There's different ways to get. And then the next year you started getting dog cuts again. Well, no, 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 no. I got it. It wasn't dog cuts. It was. Well, it's a whole other conversation here. What dog cuss? Because yeah. if you dog cuss me with that guy, it would have yeah, been a different would, situation. You might have some. Yeah, I would have been. I would have yeah. been Trail Spreewell. I understand. Okay, so We're talking about John Gruden. Go ahead. Yeah, but yes. but but in this situation with Mike McCarthy, you got a good coach and a good quarterback, man. And just like Jerry said, you you know how close you are. You were so close. If I picked you to go to the Super Bowl when we changed our picks. I picked you to beat Green Bay because I, much like Jerry, can see that how close you are. You just stubbed your toe against Green Bay. Stubbed our toe? Are you kidding? Okay, so what do you want me to call it? It's the all-time playoff disaster I've ever witnessed in my life. It is. In my life. I've been doing this a long time. I've never seen anything like it before. Seven seed beats a two seed in the history of the league. I didn't just beat. It was annihilation from the start. That happened. Well, not like that. Twenty-seven to nothing before it, halftime. It, it happens. Forty-eight to six. It happens early when you don't come to play. Oh, when you don't come to play because I saw him not come to play two years ago at home against San Francisco. I saw him not ready to play on offense a year ago at San Francisco when Dak threw two second quarter interceptions. I've seen it again and again and again. So here's the point: you said you have a good coach and a good quarterback. 
No, we have a pretty good coach and a pretty good quarterback, and we're America's team. And again, I'm going to tell you my perspective. I'm spoiled, but I'm realistically spoiled, not unrealistically. How could you be spoiled in 20 years? Here's what I experienced. Up, buddy. Here's what I experienced. The first 30 times they played Super Bowl, 16 of those times we were in the NFC Championship game. More than half the time, I grew up through all that. I know Roger Staubach. I covered him. I, I know him inside and out. Okay. I know Troy Aikman really, really well. I know what they are. And by the way, Roger Staubach was 11 and six in the postseason, and Troy was 11 and four in the postseason. So I lived through all that. Now I'm living going on 30 years of n not even sniffing the NFC Championship game. I'm going on 30 years of 12 and 5 records, and for the first time in the history of this league, three straight 12 and 5 did not get that team even to the NFC Championship game, even at least to the NFC Championship game. That has never ever happened before. So what just happened last night? Jerry Jones, he. he telegraphed this when he talked to the team in his exit speech that he gave to him because he, as, as they all said he said i don't have many more opportunities in my life because he was talking about his mortality and how much longer he's going to 81 years of age i wish he wouldn't do that because he could, he could live for 25 more years that wouldn't surprise me being realistic. okay he's probably being realistic if, if you want to go off the the tables you know that's what it would tell you so the point is that jerry just said I'm too old to plunge because a young Jerry, a 49, 50, 51 year old Jerry, just when he took over the Dallas Cowboys, he would have plunged in this situation. He would have said, unacceptable, that's unacceptable. What, that's what I just tried to tell yeah. you. You sitting up complaining about 30 years and 28 years and then suffering. If you part ways with him, you're resetting the clock. Okay. You're not listening to me? Yeah, no, Jerry I, is telling you this. No, but he said, I don't, I don't have time to reset the clock. He we doesn't. Need Why would you to... reset the clock if you're 81 years old and you're talking because about you don't have Because it will only get worse from here. If okay. you reset the clock and you bring in somebody and you don't get to where Mike McCarthy has gotten you, okay, we'll you talk put about yourself this behind the sticks. Okay, so the problem is we're going to lose a bunch of free agents. We're not going to have any cap room to sign free agents. All these stars are going to come due on having to pay the Micahs and the CD. And when has that ever been a problem for the Dallas okay. Cowboys? All right. But it's going to be a cap problem because you're not going to be able to keep but building they around it. have always had cap okay. problems and so figured it out. Here, here's the problem. Mike McCarthy, since that long ago Super Bowl that you mentioned 14 years ago, he's six and nine in the postseason since then. Okay. He's one and three as the head coach of the Dallas okay. Cowboys in the postseason. Dak Prescott is now two and five as the quarterback of the Cowboys in the postseason. Understood. So you get a lot of regular season success, and then good luck to you because you're going to need a whole it, lot it, of luck. It, it right? happens to a lot of quarterbacks okay. before right. they move on to win a Super Bowl All right. in this league. This is the most valuable team in the world. It is still called America's team because every time it plays football on television, especially on Fox, it goes through the and roof. How, and how did it become the most valuable team? Because a smart man bought it at a certain rate, yep. and he increased the value over time based on all the things that he's been able to do, acquiring players, winning Super Bowls, marketing the hell out of it. Yeah, He knows what he's doing. Okay, you got to so let it finish. They're America's greatest gate attraction, but they got no chance to win a Super Bowl under Jerry Jones at age 81 because he just sent a message to that locker room that the unacceptable was completely acceptable. I don't think he sent the message because yes, he did. those now, players in there respect their head coach. The, the, the quarterback no, they the love team, him because he's easy, he's the easy the to play for. You team team know it, and I know likes it. Likes him. The quarterback of the oh, team has the highest why wouldn't they? percentage why wouldn't they in the NFL it? since Mike McCarthy started calling the plays. He's completed, what is it, 69, 70% of his passes. He's Come on. It. There's no urgency in that locker room. There's no good fear factor. Nobody's walking on any eggs. Maybe there's not. Maybe there's not a player that has that type of personality that has that edge that they have once upon a time. There is okay. no Charles Haley in that locker room. No. Nope. There's no, no Michael, Michael Irvin in that, in that locker room. room. There's no Troy Aikman in that locker there's room. There's no Troy Aikman in that locker yeah. room. But that ain't Mike McCarthy. Those personalities came to Dallas. Okay. Did Jimmy Johnson didn't create those personalities. What happened after we gave up 266 yards rushing and got literally run off the field at Buffalo? Rob Gronkowski went on Fox 
and said right after the game, that is not a mentally tough football team. That starts from the top, starts with the head coach. You know it, and I know it. There's no leadership in the locker room, and there is definitely no leadership at the head it's coach. A diff, it's a different type of leadership than what you are used to with the Dallas Cowboys. There are, Dak Prescott is a leader. He just leads differently. You're looking for more of, like I said, more of a Charles Haley type, not yeah. going to stand for it, throw a helmet through a wall when they don't do something right. You don't have that type of player. Okay. This is so, not the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where we had nothing but players with uh, attitude. Don't, don't even start. It, but it, that's the like, way our team was built. It's like apples and rotten but, oranges. But our, what team, you're talking our about. team was built a certain way. Our head coach was not like that. Our head coach was nice and calm. In everything, he just was. He approached it different. Are you talking about Tony? Tony does. He approached Tony, it different. Tony has inner strength to him that is palpable to me. It's, it's, it's just you can feel it. It's a different way. It. It's a different way of coaching. Tony is a natural born leader in his way, much yes. more than Mike ever was. He leads differently. So he doesn't lead at all. There's no leading. He can call plays. I'll give you that. So in the regular season, you got a chance next year to have the number one scoring team in football. You got a chance. Yeah, hopefully you can capitalize on okay. that. Though. All right. So what happened this year? If you step back from it, you say, okay, what did Mike McCarthy achieve this year? Well, he achieved losing to Arizona, and you never let us forget about that one. But Josh Dobbs, okay, all right, so that wasn't Mike's fault. And Dak, as he said after the game, I stunk in that game because the QBR was pathetic. It was a 30 So now you want to move on from Dak. Okay, I, I've been saying that. I, I said it three years ago. Sign Kirk okay. Cousins. That makes right. a lot of sense. Okay, I didn't say sign Kirk Cousins. So who are you going to sign? Okay, well, again, I wanted Tom Brady three years ago, and guess what? We, Tom we got Brady getting ready football. to work for Fox in a couple weeks, okay. man. Come I'm on. just saying, I already first guessed. The show's about first guessing. I first guessed it three years ago. I said, go get Tom Brady when his stock was at the bottom. When Belichick has said he can't play. Robert Kraft said, you're right, Bill. Let's push him out the back door. had a quarterback okay. already in place. Okay. Well, we didn't. You because, did. I mean, it, it's the same guy. Okay, what have we seen from Dak Prescott lately, just in the last three years? We saw him. Dak Prescott in week 12 was an MVP candidate. Okay. We saw him two, two playoffs ago against San Francisco at home. We had a home playoff game. He stunk in that game. Okay. And we saw him at San Francisco in a game that defense actually showed up for, and he stunk in that game. And he himself so said, Brady ain't never stunk in no game he's ever played in. Come on, don't I'm, I'm just asking you. I'm just asking okay. you a question. Well, all he did is win seven. Super I didn't Bowls. say. I didn't question whether or not he won Super Bowls. I'm asking that you if he ever won zero Super Bowls. I, I, he never even sniffed I, the I, I, I understand that, but game. you can't just say okay. somebody. As okay, if Tom Brady he, never struggled. But okay, he Dak routinely stinks in playoff games. Three of the last four he stunk, and by his own admission, he stunk against Green Bay the other day because. In, in the first half, he throws two horrendous interceptions, one for a pick six, and we're down 27 to nothing. Okay, how am I supposed to count on that? How am I supposed to invest new emotion in that? Because well, you're I going to invest. I, I don't you're going to have to. You're going to be forced to. I'm thinking about getting a new team. Well, yeah, maybe maybe you know? that's it then. No, I'm serious. I, I, I spent last night, I was thinking, you know, Wayne loves the Packers. He's going to be on tomorrow. And I started looking at the Packers. And, and I don't think he wants you with the Packers. I, I, just might, I might don't need to on bring the, the negativity over to no, the No, because I look at that team, and I love Jordan Love. And I love how he carries himself. And I love how he played against us. But he, he tore us to pieces. He toyed with us. And they have four young receivers, as you well know, because one of them we had on the show yesterday is Romeo, and they're all 23 or under. They're going to go places. I, so you're going to abandon C.D. Lamb now? No, I love C.D. I already told you he's the best receiver. Yeah, you, I got that you, going you, for you, me. You, you want to move to the Green Bay Packers because they got young receivers. No, I'm, as I'm if just C.D. Saying, Lamb is chopped you know, how, how can I trust Jerry Jones anymore? Because it's clear to me all he cares about is putting an entertaining product okay, on so, the field. Okay, so... Does let me Jerry be, really let, care let about winning the, Super Let Bowl? me be the reasonable one at the table yeah. right here. So if you hire Jim Harbaugh mm -hmm. and you go 12 and 5 and you get knocked out in the wild card round, what have you accomplished? Nothing. Yet? Nothing. But that wouldn't happen. Well, 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 you, you, you know, you hey. know it wouldn't happen? Everywhere Jim Harbaugh has been, great things have happened. You, you saw he took the University of San Diego and turned it around. He took Stanford to 12 and 1. I, Are I you kidding me? I understand. He took Good the thing. 49ers uh, to the brink of winning a Super Bowl because it was interference on Michael Crabtree in the end zone. Should have been called on a pass from Colin Kaepernick, and it was not. And his older brothers survived in that game, and they won it.
I give you that. In a short order of, of knowing you were working with your love. But to sit up and act as though Jim Harbaugh wasn't struggling when they redid his deal and took money from him at Michigan. Yep. And he just started winning big at Michigan to Urban Meyer decided to leave yep. okay, Ohio State to take a job in television. I know, but he yeah. took a Michigan program whose cupboard was bare. It took a while to okay. turn it back. Oh, so, now, so now the narrative is it took a while to well, he didn't have a quarterback. Him. Just give him, give him JJ and he's got a and, shot. And I say many times over and I've seen it. If you don't have a quarterback to yeah. see, you're I, I, never going to win. Okay. Everybody so, knows that. So we have a pretty good one, which means that next year we'll be one and done if we're lucky. And speaking of luck, I got to throw this out because Jerry Jones' attitude is like, maybe next year we'll get lucky. We got lucky this year because the truth is, Keyshawn, if you step back from it, we were in big trouble because you bet me at one point uh, on Philly winning the division. It was like mid-season. You said yeah. you were a better dinner on yeah, Philly, Philly winning the division. Philly hit a wall and couldn't you jump know, over it. They couldn't jump over it. They went from 10-1 and one to 11-7. and seven. Yeah. They fell apart way worse than even we fell apart. And we were slowly falling apart. So we lucked into the Detroit game, and we lucked into, thanks to Philadelphia, Eagles turning into Beagles. A few, a few we, wins are lucky. Okay. You know that. We lucked into the two seed. All of a sudden, the heavens open. Michael and I are talking about the Jimmy curse is broken, but I forgot about the Jerry curse because the Jerry curse is still in so place. Much that Jimmy curse. Yeah, so much for the Jimmy curse. And I look up. And we have the potential to win two home games against a lot of teams we obviously could have beaten, should have beaten. Well, you and we, we're seven and a half point favorites over the youngest team in the league from Green Bay. And I seriously, because you seriously thought, oh, the Dallas pass rush is going to eat Jordan Love up. It's his first playoff start, and he's going to have a long, hard game. And guess what? The opposite happened. And it was so bad that, that somebody had to pay for it. If you care about your fandom, if you fear that you're going to lose some of your fandom, you make a move. You go get some. I don't care who you go get. You just change coaches because, as you always you say, you can't change it. coaches. It's the only thing win. you can change. And then right? you don't just skip. You don't just change coaches without a plan, man. Yeah. You, you realize. Like, what are you going to okay. do? Okay. Jim Harbaugh doesn't want the job. He's staying at Michigan because they're going to go a lifetime deal. He gets his void, the uh, yeah. his protection in his contract the way he wants it. Yeah. Bill Belichick decides he doesn't want to work for Jerry Jones. Pete Carroll says, oh, I like the Pacific Northwest. We're just going to relax and chill. What are you going to do? You going to hire Vrabel? Like, what are you going to do? You I, got I, a yeah. coach that's capable of doing it right there. Capable of doing what? Getting you to a Super Bowl. He is not capable of getting us to a Super okay. Bowl. Okay. Right, yeah, I'm sorry. It, it, this is all about Jerry puppeteering. He needs puppet coaching because he wants to remain in complete control. So the man, you know says, he's not, he, the man says he's 81 years old. He yeah. doesn't have much time to keep messing with this stuff. Yeah, but he, he wants to win a championship, but he wants a puppet as a coach to try to win a championship, even though he doesn't have much time left, as he said. But you just said he wants somebody he can control. He his comfort zone. He doesn't want to blow up his comfort zone. If he zone. wants to win a championship you know what? so bad, why wouldn't he want to do that? He loves Mike McCarthy. He loves every Friday afternoon, as you know, to have beer and nachos with his head coach and hear what's really going on with the football team so that he gets some information and ammunition for his radio shows so he can speak as, as, as if he really knows what's going on inside the football team. I, I honestly, and, out of all the owners that I've ever been around and dealt with on and off the field, I believe he knows football. And he knows it just as well as anybody that is coaching the team and everything. That's what I believe. And having been in that situation with him and understanding, watching him and his son and work, I think they know football. You may think he's I, using I think for, you may think he's using it for a radio show. I don't. Mm. Stephen knows football. Jerry, not so much. And I spent literally hundreds of hours with Jerry because I wrote Man, three books about or whatever guard for a national guard. championship at, team. At 190 pounds, he did. Well, that was back in mm. the 60s or yeah. whatever, man. Yeah. 50, 60s, whatever it was. Keyshawn. It's a happy day for you and a dark one for me because you know and I know you'll get to ridicule me all next year at all the oh, moments. Well, if they don't win, of course. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that. Way to go, Jerry. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show?
make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.